Hello and welcome to the November Historics Auction. We are here at the Brooklands Motor Racing Circuit in Surrey and we have got over 160 lots on offer at the auction itself, which is happening on Saturday the 26th. I'm now going to take you on a little tour of a few of them before handing over to Matthew Priddy and Tom Exton for more. This is a 2001 Aston Martin Vanquish, an Ian Callum design, and it's a design that I love very much. Two words describe this car that will have all car fans' ears pricking up, and that is rare and desirable, and it certainly is. Under the bonnet, it's a six litre V12, and then there are Formula One style paddle shifts connected to a six-speed gearbox that you can control by the steering wheel. The estimate for this is between 50 and 60,000 pounds. This 2004 Rolls-Royce Phantom is a car I couldn't live in thanks to its very fluffy carpets. Now, this was the first all-new design Rolls-Royce from the time that BMW took the company over in 2003. It's got a 6.7-litre V12 engine and air suspension, and it is quite possibly the most luxurious car in the world. Well, perhaps you can tell us if you are the final bidder on it. The estimate for this car is between 52 and 65,000 pounds. This is a 1998 Honda Integra Type R and just saying those words makes me smile because this is an energetic little machine. It is a proper driver's car. Now this one has been exceptionally well maintained because it is rust free. It has got a stainless steel exhaust and an uprated suspension, but other than that, it is pretty standard. Its estimate is between 16 and 22,000 pounds, and you should make a bid. A 1987 MG Metro, and it is confession time because I had one. But this has the added visuals of a turbo body kit. It comes with paperwork to show almost 3,000 pounds worth of work has been done recently and it is at no reserve. So why not make a bid? Lot number 158 is this very, very nice 1986 Porsche 911 Sport Targa. Now I'm a bit biased as I actually own pretty much exactly the same thing. It's got a 3.2 litre naturally aspirated flat six. It's got the all important G50 manual gearbox and it's also benefited from a recent repaint in its original color. Absolutely belting, I love these. Lot number 244 then is this beautiful 1992 964 Turbo. It's a right-hand drive car, it's manual, and it's only covered 49,000 miles. And the thing I love about this car, the interior is this beautiful blood red with the white piping that beautifully matches the exterior paint. You've got a sunroof on there, that manual gearbox made to that turbo engine. It is absolutely stunning. And if I wasn't trying to be sensible with money at the moment, this would be right up my street for a bid. Lot number 182 then is this Datamasso Pantera from 1973, powered by a big fat V8 engine. It's actually benefited from being rebuilt recently by the chairman of the Datamasso Owners Club. It comes with the all important Marty report and a UK V5 registration document. Amazing, amazing car to drive, and I know full well because I've driven it. Let's go see the next lot. Lot number 139, then, shock horror. Finally, I'm ending with another Porsche. It is a 2004 Carrera 4S. I absolutely adore these cars, and what's so special about this particular example is not just the very rare alloy option, which were an upgraded extra from new, it's also got a factory aero kit as well. There are literally none of these cars with the error kit on it. It's a fantastic example, and that is lot number 139. And I've also just spotted a carbon steering wheel as well. What a belter. Next to this lovely wide-bodied Bentley Continental T is something that I'm trying to sell to my wife as a family car. It's a four-door Aston Martin Rapide S, named after the old Lagonda Rapide. The reason I like it is it's got this fabulous four-seater setup here, which is really, really cool. And it even has isofix points, so I can put my children's seats in the back. 
The main selling point, of course, of all of these cars is that absolutely fabulous six litre V12 engine, which any fans of the DB9 will tell you is one of the best sounding cars ever made. Offered at 38 to 48,000 pounds with just 13,000 miles on the clock, it doesn't seem a great deal of money, not compared to other cars on the market like this. All I've got to do is go home and convince my wife that it's the next family wagon. Next up, lot 241. It's a bit of a handful to get in and out of, but it's the replica Countach by Mirage. It's stunning and it offers original wheels, genuine wheels and genuine rear wide clusters. Powered by a 3.5 litre V8. I know it's not quite right, but it does still sound fantastic. This particular example is estimated 42 to 52,000 pounds, so a fraction of the price of the real thing. It's beautiful in red, it's well finished, and it is actually quite drivable, all apart from the reversing, which as Jeremy Clarkson would have shown you many years ago, does require sticking your head out of the side. Other aspects on this particular car is that it's only had two owners from new and just 426 miles. It's very, very good value, I think. It turns heads wherever you go, and trust me, very few people will know it's not the genuine article. Next up, lot 149. It's an Aston Martin DB7 Vantage Volante. The reason I've picked this is because I think they really have aged well. This particular example in silver with its mohair hood does look the part. Now this particular example has got 48,000 miles on the clock, which is low of course, and it's estimated 21 to 26, which doesn't seem a great deal of money for a V12 drop head Aston Martin DB7. The car that I think sort of saved Aston Martin. It's a timeless classic, it's not that expensive, and ultimately you can still do 0 to 60 in five seconds, whilst looking like you're made of money. So that to me is a really top tip. It's something I've always wanted, and at this price, I think well worth a bit. Lot 181 is this 1964 Aston Martin DB5. Now this particular example is privately owned and was restored between 2017 and 2019. It's had a few nice upgrades. It's been bought out to 4.2 and it's running fast road cams. It's also got the slightly wider track wheels. But nicely, it's also got some creature comforts. It's got powered steering, central locking, and this lovely modern retro stereo in it. Now the estimate on this is 540 to 590, which is very good value for a restored DB5. And ultimately, that's the price to pay if you want to be James Bond. Well, that's just a little selection of all the wonderful machines that we have got on offer. So please come along to the auction on Saturday the 26th of November here at Mercedes-Benz World at Brooklyn's doors open at 9.30am. And we have preview days, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of this week from 10am till 5pm. You do need to pre-register if you want to make a bid though, so you can do that when you're here or online at historics.co.uk. Over to Tom for the socials. <laughs> As always, you're probably sick of this by now. Follow on YouTube, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video. The podcasts are on YouTube, but they're also available on all your usual streaming platforms. And last but not least, there's also the Historic Instagram page. There'll be live updates from cars ahead of the next auction. So you get a little sneak peek over on there. And there's also a giveaway running currently with a very, very cool prize. So the details of that are on Instagram. You will need to subscribe to YouTube though for that. For now though, is that it? That is it. Perfect. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. bye.